I greet you in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One more week that the Lord has given us, we are so thankful to God. Without any further introduction, let me get to the word this evening as we have a bit more to speak to you from the word of God. Last week, we were discussing on the topic, uh, the comparison between uh, Joseph and Jesus. As we are in a particular uh, uh, sermon series uh, on Joseph's uh, uh, journey of life, um, from the dream to destiny, tonight we will be focusing on the, 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 third, po uh, the third part, the third portion, which we call as uh, uh, Joseph, the man who had the favor of God. Uh, before we get get into the particular uh, specific to topic for tonight, as the Lord have uh, spoken to me, and uh, I had many uh, people who have called me uh, telling about Pastor, can you just give us some more comparisons about Joseph and Jesus? Let me give you a quick recap uh, on some of the comparisons very quickly. Let's look. Joseph was be uh, beloved uh, for his uh, father. Jesus was loved by his father. Joseph's father clothed him with a specific coat. For Jesus the father clothed him with a body in glory. Joseph came down into Egypt. Jesus came down into this earth. Joseph dreamed dreams but he was despised for his prophecies. Jesus spoke in prophecies but was despised for his prophetical knowledge. Joseph was sent by the father to inquire about his brothers. Jesus was sent by his father to save us all. Joseph's brothers, when they have saw him, they said, Behold, the dreamer is coming. Come, let's slay him. Look at Jesus. When the husband men, what we see on the parable in Matthew chapter 21, it says, uh, when the husband men saw him, they said, this is the heir of the vineyard. Come, let us kill him. Reuben, Reuben petitioned for the life of Joseph. Pilate petitioned for the life of Jesus. Joseph was sent twice to prison, the pit and the prison. Jesus was enclosed twice, the flesh and the grave. Joseph's brothers cast him into a pit. Jesus' brothers cast him into the grave. Joseph's brothers, while eating, intended to slay him. The Jews, while Jesus was having the Passover, decided to kill him. Joseph was sold to Egypt at the proposal of Judah. Jesus was sold to the Jews by Judas. When Joseph's brother sold him, he said nothing. Jesus did not speak a word to judge who judged him. Joseph rose up from the pit. Jesus was rose up from the grave. Joseph's coat was dipped in the blood of a goat. Jesus' garment was dipped uh, in the blood. Revelation chapter 19 verse 13. Potiphar's wife tempted Joseph but unsuccessful. Satan tempted Jesus but unsuccessful. Poti uh, Potiphar's wife grabbed Joseph's cloth. The soldiers grabbed Jesus' cloth. Joseph avoided sin yet thrust to the prison unjustly. Look at the life of Jesus. Jesus have conquered sin yet condemned to a tomb unjustly. Joseph entered into the prison and comforted those who are captives. Look at Jesus. Jesus entered into the prison, the prison of the spirit and comforted those there. Joseph had the key to the prison. Jesus has the key to release the dead. Joseph was in prison for two years. Jesus was in tomb for two nights. Joseph was brought out from the prison on Pharaoh's order. Easily interpreted the dream, provided the solution to save Pharaoh's people. Look unto Jesus. Jesus was raised from the dead, proclaiming resurrection and everlasting life, offering to the Father on mankind's salvation. Joseph had a Gentile bride. Jesus also have a Gentile bride, which is us. Pharaoh's clothed Joseph with a glorious robe. Jesus seen clothed in the glory at the second coming. 
Joseph took his position in Pharaoh's chariot and sat upon the throne where the king have uh, gave him Jesus ascended into the father into the heaven he is positioned at the right hand side of his father as we were looking it is almost 24 comparisons what we said there are 106 comparisons which we may not be able to explain everything in detail but these are some of the important comparisons we can study from the life of Joseph and Jesus. Tonight, let's discuss on this topic, Joseph, the man who had the favor of God. The favor of God is better than riches. The favor of God is better than gold, silver, diamonds and rubies. The favor of God is the golden key uh, to the gates of heaven. Every man and woman in the scripture, God used, had the favor of God, the grace of God. Bible says in the case of Joseph, the Lord was with him. God's favor was with him. Favor of God is so powerful. It is supernatural force. When you have the favor of God, you will make mountains move. When you have the favor of God, you can hold the sun. When you have the favor of God, you can divide the sea on your behalf. When you have the favor of God, demons will tremble in your friend. When you have the favor of God, take it into an extraordinary realm. God is about to use you in a special way. Look at the people in the Bible who says they were in the favor of God. Bible says Noah found the favor of God. Noah have constructed, built up an ark. He preached one single message for 120 years. Only eight soul was saved. The content of the message was simple. Every day the same sermon. Every day the same topic. But he could save eight souls. The obedience and the faith was in action of Noah's ministry. And that's the reason the favor in Noah's life has increased. To all those fathers who are watching me right now, I just want to give you a word. Your devotion and determination will bring the deliverance of your family. Noah's devotion and determination brought deliverance to his family. He could save his family. Spiritual life of yours is very important. It is not the pastors who handle your family. It is not the prophets. It is not the great men of God who handles your family. I speak to you all those who are fathers. You are the pastors of the house. It is your responsibility to hold your family, to hold them close and to make them to walk to the deliverance. Bible says Ruth found the favor of God. That's why, you know, Boaz was having the favor upon the life of Ruth. Bible says in this way, Joseph was a man who had a close walk with God. When he was in the pit, Bible says, the Lord was with him. When he was in the house of Potiphar, Bible says, the Lord was with him. When he was in jail, Bible says, the Lord was with him. That's why in jail, he was shifted to the warden of the jail. Pharaoh promoted and Pharaoh sta said this statement, truly, you are a man of God. Because when we look unto your knowledge, we know that God is with you. Even Pharaoh could recognize the presence, the favor of God, which was upon the life which is in Joseph. The angel said to Virgin Mary, you are highly favored to God. Bible says in this way, she pondered her heart to God. Bible clearly teaches into one thing and that's what I just want to focus to you what the Spirit of the Lord taught me when I was learning this word. Bible says the favor of God comes with a responsibility. Favor is God's gift but it has an attachment with a responsibility. If you are the favor of God remember you have a responsibility to fulfill the favor of God. Grace 
comes without any merits grace is a freely given you know position what god gave the entire mankind but favor of god comes with an assignment that's why when bible says whenever we see a man or a woman in the bible who had the favor of god had the assignment to fulfill the kingdom of god study bible very clearly whoever were under the favor of god had to complete a task Favor talks to you this evening time about responsibility. Favor talk to you about your respond back to the favor. You cannot simply sleep or rest. You cannot simply waste your time when you are under the favor of God. There is a task which is given unto you. Favor leads you to an assignment. I repeat that one more time. Favor leads to you an assignment. Your responsibility is very important in that assignment. When favor of God completes you, it is for easy that you will be able to complete the task which God gave you. When you are in the favor of God, you are responsible to God. I repeat that one more time. When you are in the favor of God, you are responsible to God. You are responsible to the assignment, the spiritual assignment which is given unto you. And that will lead you to the spiritual maturity level. which will increase day by day after so many years being a believer a child of god if you feel that your maturity level is not increasing then this is the night that we need to recheck our faithfulness to the favor of god responsibility is not doing what you want responsibility is doing what you ought to do I repeat one more time responsibility is not what you want to do responsibility is what you ought to do Mary you are highly favored the angel of god came to Mary by telling this word you are highly favored the angel of god is going to talk to Joseph because there is a chance that Joseph himself will take the stone to throw over Mary So God says when you are responsible to the favor of God God will prepare the background to carry the promise of God Mary was highly favored Mary Bible says Mary you are highly favored you are going you know you are going to face a big scandal I repeat that one more time favor doesn't mean that everything to be positive When Mary was favored, Bible says she was going to be a big scandal tomorrow. Everyone around her is going to speak about her, about her pregnancy, about her life. Bible says in this way, tomorrow's headline was about Mary. Mary was actually dotted by everyone in the society. When you are highly favored, people will look unto you. People will look in a different upon you. But the Lord says, "My favor is enough for you." Mary, everyone is going to raise their fingers against you, but you are highly favored. Bible says, "Mary, your pregnancy you are you are going to face tough time in your pregnancy there will be shuffles and shift which is going to happen in your pregnancy but still you are highly favored many you will not have a proper place to give the birth to the savior bible says still many you are highly favored as soon as he is going to be born the government is going to talk against him the government will try to kill him but still bible says mary you are highly favored mary your son the savior will be going to the cross of that calvary but still bible says mary you will be highly favored favor brings responsibility look into the life of mary when mary had the favor of god she had to take a responsibility what was the responsibility the responsibility what she carried was actually the heavens beloved son i repeat that one more time when god gives you a favor you carry your promise as a pregnant person 
a pregnant person carrying the promise of God and you are totally covered by the favor of God there will be fights there will be you know you know words against you but bible says you are highly favored favor brings responsibility within but at the same time controversies will come from outside favor brings responsibility to within and the controversy will come from outside bible says in this way david was highly favored at the age of 17 god anointed david by samuel to be the king of the nation but saul chased david for 10 years david is a king who lived in caves david is known as a king who lived always in caves David had to run from cave to cave. My question here, a man who had the favor of God for 10 years, the one who is anointed under God is running from cave to cave. Where where will our logic work with the favor of God? Joseph was favored. When you are in the pit, I repeat that one more time, when you are in the pit, God's favor is upon you. You may ask God, where is the favor which I can find? When brothers have sold Joseph, Joseph could have asked, you know, God, where is the favor? When Joseph's heart was breaking into pieces, Joseph could have this question, where is the favor? When he was falsely accused by, you know, Potiphar's wife, Joseph had this question where is your favor upon me when everyone rejected throughout the life of Joseph he may ask God where is the favor of you upon me but i have an answer for you listen to me very carefully i have an answer for you stop looking at what you are going through but start looking on how you are going to be The success of Joseph was he was stopping looking on everything what he was facing but he was heading to the promise what he have seen in dream tonight when i speak to you you are in the same position every promises of god came to you as a positive word nothing is negative what god gave you every promises are positive but god is speaking to you very specifically look unto your future look unto your promise where your destiny is i repeat that one more time stop looking at what you are going through but start looking what you are going to stop looking at your past start looking at your future stop looking into the pit every time start looking onto the palace stop looking at where you have been and start looking at where you are going to be the lord is speaking to you tonight you are blessed can you touch yourself right now can you touch yourself right now and tell this word with me i am blessed i am highly favored even though i am in the pit even though i am in the prison even though nobody is respecting me my family is criticizing me my family itself are putting me down the lord is speaking to me i take it as a prophetic word i am blessed I am highly favored. The Lord is speaking to you. You know the Lord is going to give you double for the trouble what you have taken. I repeat that one more time. The Lord is going to give you double for the trouble what you have faced in your life. When you are in the favor of God, the situation which was ma- mastering you, you will master that situation. I repeat that one more time. The situations which was mastering you, God is going to make you the master. to rule that situation only one question which comes in 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 midst of us this evening the god is asking to us can i trust in the favor which i gave you many time god is so faithful on the favor god is so faithful on every words what he spoke to us but he is asking to us can i trust you in what i have bestowed upon you If God gives you great advantage God gives you great privilege let me ask you can God trust you Many asked me you know this question as a pastor pastor why I am not growing 
why i am not seeing what i want to see why my promises are not fulfilling now listen to me very specifically i'm speaking unto your life right now the lord spoke to me many time god is not able to trust us for what we hold from him he blessed us so much he you know anointed us so much he have increased our territories in a big manner but still we are not trustworthy because we are not fulfilling what he desired in our life because of that we are not able to increase right now can i ask you one thing are you stealing the tithe are you stealing the time are you stealing the talent what god gave you now listen this very carefully this is very important it is not on how much you give from what you have it is on how much you give what you owe to give i repeat that one more time it is not how much you give from what you have but it is what you give from what you owe to give bible says in the case of ananias and sapphira they brought you know the tithe the gift unto the lord it is not bible doesn't say that they didn't bring the gift they brought it but what was the problem what they have faced bible says they stealed from what they were supposed to give it is not the amount what you bring to god it is the faithfulness on what you give Hallelujah. I repeat that one more time. You may be giving a particular amount, you may be giving a particular time, you may be giving a particular talent, you know, particularly you're giving this much to God, but God says you are not giving me how much you ought to give me back because that much favor I have for you. The question is coming into our life again. Can God trust on the favor what he gave us? in this pandemic he is asking us to look back and sit back i repeat that one more time in this pandemic god is asking to us look back and set up god doesn't have any problem getting it to you god doesn't have any problem getting it to you but god has a problem getting it through you i repeat that one more time god doesn't have a problem to get in through your life but god has a problem what it is not your faithful unto him what is the definition of favor now listen this very carefully favor of god can describe as a divine kindness or an act of true compassion from god to fulfill a task of god I repeat that one more time the favor of god can explain in this way a divine kindness an act of true compassion from god to fulfill a specific task let me put in my own way favor is something you get what you don't deserve example a house where you didn't construct a job that you don't deserve God always give you credits when you are not faithful in many areas of your life. When you are in the favor of God, you are under criticism. When you are in the favor of God, criticisms are part of that journey. When you are in the favor of God, you are under the attacks of Satan. you will be the under the attacks of people that is part of the journey people will backbite you people will backstab you i repeat that one more time people will backbite you people will backstab you that is part of this journey why because you are highly favored bible says this message to you this evening time put your heads up and say to yourself speak to yourself I am highly favored. When people stab at you, when people speak negative against you, say it out this evening time by yourself, I am highly favored. There is nothing that you cannot, you know, do because God is with you. I repeat that, don't get frustrated, don't get panicked, don't get low. Bible says you can do everything 
who strengthens to you god is the one who strengthens to you you are under the favor of god there is no limit when you are in the favor it is an open boundary how many of you can exercise the 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 the, the favor of god in the depth in a, in a in a depth way this evening time speak it out my time has come i'm highly favored my time has come i am highly favored satan knows if you come out of out of this pit you will reach to the palace satan knows if you come out of the pit you will reach to the to the palace to shake the world satan knows when you come out of the pit you will shake the nation as you will destroy all the plans and the purpose of satan's kingdom that's why he hates you i repeat that one more time that's why satan hates you that's why you know he is trying to crush you that's why he is trying to destroy you but i speak to you this prophetical word whatever plans he planned against you will not prosper against you why because you are highly favored i prophesy to your life this evening time you are highly favored satan knows you are going to be a history maker satan knows that you will be well known satan knows god is going to make you as an instrument for his kingdom that's why he is disturbing you so i tell you this evening time stop complaining stop competing stop confusing move on keep your heads up keep your body available let your spirit be energized and say it out i am highly favored when your heads are up when you keep yourself moving what do you do indirectly you cut the plans of satan i repeat that one more time when you keep your head up when you are moving forward you are cutting down you are cutting up the plans of satan let this evening time be the evening of moments in your life that will cut the plans of satan listen to this very carefully bible says favor increases oh ramashia favor increases i'm getting excited now favor increases why favor increases because you are obedient to god mary was highly favored when she was favored bible says the drop or oh, or oh, the drop from heaven came into her womb but gradually it started to increase why because mary was obedient to the favor obedience obedience is when very important to favor you know in in the first in the first part i said you know it is very important on the responsibility when you have favor now i come into a position place where bible says your obedience is very important when you are under the favor of god now listen very carefully ruth was in the favor of god bible says she was a gentile woman but still she was ready to stick with the jewish mother in law bible says in this way indirectly that shows her obedience she had a choice to withdraw she had a choice to get married for the second time she had a choice to leave you know the the, the place where she is right now but she said i will not leave this place i just want to be obedient under the favor of god and that's why bible says because of that obedience god blessed ruth and that is why she has been you know in the bible bible says obedience is better than sacrifice look into the life of jabez bible says many of us repeat the prayer of jabez many of us recited the prayer of jabez many of us prayed hundred times the prayer of jabez but that thing is working out in our life but i tell you this evening time before you recite before you repeat let you do this right now let you bring your obedience aligning to the favor of god to pray and to make your promises fulfilling bible says joseph was under the favor of god but his obedience was very important for him to reach to the destiny many people who started with the favor of god 
was failed in the journey because they were disobedient according to Deuteronomy chapter 28 I don't have time to uh, take up the scripture and uh, show you all those verses Bible says there are two kind of people Bible says disobedience bring judgment of God but obedience bring the blessing of God I repeat that one more time disobedience bring judgment of God but obedience bring uh, the blessing of God there is only two two ways in this life one is either to be obedient to God or second to be disobedient to God if you're obedient to God you bring forth the blessings of heaven but if you are disobedient to God you bring forth the judgment from heaven so favor has nothing to do with your your personality but it has something to do with your response it has something to do with your responsibility it has something to do with your obedience and that will lead you to the perfect will of God I repeat that one more, one more time favor of God will take you to response responsibility and obedience will take you to the will of God will let you to reach to the destiny of God everyone who is listening to me this evening time let we have a self check in our life what is our response to the favor of God how do we we say to God how much obedient are we under the favor of God our life is going to have a surprise ending nothing in this planet earth had been ever seen the incident watch what is going to be seen Bible says in the in this earth there is going to be a great event which is going to be taken place it is nothing other than the second coming of Jesus Christ Bible says in this way any time from now the trumpet voice is going to sound the dead in Christ is going to rise up Bible says in a tinkling of an eye it will be very quick we are going to those who are alive is going to be caught up in that you know that call when Jesus is going to come soon those who are in the favor of God it is the time to meet up together those who are in the favor of God it is the time that we are going to be led to the palace what I'm speaking to you is not the the palace which is made of muddy clay I'm speaking unto the palace which is the eternal palace the Lord is speaking to us the palace the destiny what God is speaking to you is not the promises of this earthly blessing but the promises of the eternity Bible says in this way God is going to take us Jesus is going to come soon my destiny is with my God repeat this with me my destiny is with God my promises is with God so it's time to say goodbye world goodbye let me repeat that one more time my time is coming I'm going to say goodbye to the world my time is coming goodbye I'm going to see the king of glory I'm going to see the Lord of Lords I'm going to worship him let the people People of God together start worshiping in the places where you are right now let it be in your homes let it be in a workplace start rejoicing and worshiping the day is going to come the, the people who are in the favor of God are going to meet up the Lord very quickly what is your response your responsibility and obedience to the favor let's self check this evening time shall we close our eyes as we prepare ourselves this evening time let me ask you let me ask you this question many times you are not being used by God is because of your disobedience your dishonesty many times it is not God is not using you but what he entrusted unto you we are not faithful but shall we check ourselves this evening time Shall we pray together this evening time? Shall we look unto our life where you have fallen, where you are not faithful, where you are disobedient? Can you say, I'm coming back to your presence? As last week I said, when, when, when there is a chance, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is calling you to the pulpit, never walk to the pulpit, but run to the pulpit. 
by telling God, I love you so much. I am not faithful on the favor of what you have bestowed upon me. But I submit and I surrender this evening time to be a faithful person. To respond to my call. To be obedient until the last breath of my life. Forgive my sins. Take me as yours. Let me live for you ever, Jesus. Let me live for you. Those who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, let this time be the time that you speak unto Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Come into my life from this day. I'm ready to follow you. Those believers who are watching and listening to me, if you are in the favor of God, Definitely you are in the favor of God. It's not just your favor. You are highly favored. But many times the favor of God is not working because of our disobedience and dishonesty. We are not responsible on what the favor of God gave us. We are many times disobedient. But can we pray this evening time? Forgive me. Let me run this race faithfully and finish this race until the last breath of my life. Lord, I pray and I bless my people for your glory. Lord, those people who are, you know, wanting a physical healing, let the, the hand of God touch them and heal them. Those people who need a, a spiritual healing, let the hand of God be visible upon them. Those who need an emotional healing, let your hands be in hand to touch and heal them emotionally this evening time. Thank you, Lord, for the favor that you gave us. We don't deserve it. It is by your grace. We don't deserve it. It is by your love lord let us be faithful unto your favor to run and to finish this race until the last breath of our life we thank you for listening and prayer i bless my people in the name of the father son and the holy spirit thank you lord for listening and prayers in jesus precious name i pray amen 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 may the love of the father god grace of the son jesus christ and the sweet communion of the holy spirit be with us all forever and ever amen amen god bless you until we meet again let's connect together in prayer maranatha god bless you